What is up, folks? <clears throat> what is up, what is up? Lou, do I have any Aquarius in the house? Anyone with Aquarius in their chart? Hello, hello. As y'all can see from the banner here in the bottom right corner, it is now time for Aquarius and Pisces. Aquarius and Pisces. What is up, y'all? Hello, hello. I do usually wait till about 50 viewers to pop up in the comments before showing y'all the decks that I use. And yes, I said decks, meaning this whole week. This whole week I've been using two decks for every zodiac sign. Hello. Hopefully y'all are uh, doing A-OK -okay tonight. Aquarius and Pisces, what up? Hello there. Oh yes, all week I've been using two decks. There's about 54 viewers in the chat now. So the decks I have been using all week. Every day, which... I have been literally using every day this week. The Everyday Witch Tarot, yes. For the first half of your reading, Aquarius and Pisces. And then the Witch's Tarot to clarify the reading for the last half. Alrighty. Kind of shuffling these cards back into the deck. Oh yes, Aquarius. Your reading will start here in about five minutes or less. If y'all are new here, definitely hit that follow button. It's greatly appreciated. If y'all like the energy or lack thereof, I just woke up from a nap, like, literally uh, within the last... 15 minutes, but neither here nor there. If y'all like the energy I bring to the Tarot TikTok table, then definitely hit that like button. If y'all have an Aquarius in your friends group, maybe your family, maybe a coworker, or a neighbor, or one of them is a Pisces, or any of them has Aquarius and or Pisces in their chart, definitely hit that share button and let a person know that yes, Rick from Free Will Tarot is doing quite the experience of a reading for the Aquarius and Pisces collectives tonight, at this time, at this moment, here, right now. <clears throat> also, I do have a YouTube channel, y'all. I do have a YouTube channel. Definitely check that out when you get the chance. It is Free Will Tarot. Same logo, same title. The link to my YouTube channel is in the TikTok bio. 
Alrighty. With that being said, how are y'all doing? Aquarius, this is... Yay, Aqua tonight. Yes. Yes, it sure is. They said I'm dying. Um... Is that, uh, literal? Oop, it's aqua time. And don't you mean, no, just have food poisoning. Okay, I was gonna say, don't you mean unaliving? Did you forget we are on TikTok slash YouTube? Say hi, everyone, to YouTube. This is going on uh, YouTube tonight. Four in the morning. TikTok Tarot. TikTok Tarot. <laughs> the TikTok Tarot table. The Tarot TikTok table. Any Hoosers, y'all. Aquarius. Yes, definitely hit that follow button. If you're new here, hit that like button, especially if you like the energy I bring to the Tarot TikTok table. And hit that share button, especially with anyone in your life, no matter what area. Especially if they have Aquarius or Pisces in their chart, or if they are just a huge fan of Tarot, no matter their sign. And they would love to experience something new and creative by someone like me. Me, this guy. Alrighty, y'all, let's go ahead and get into it. I already have people 10 steps ahead of me with those scissors. As I mentioned before, I will be using the Everyday Witch to start the reading off. Everyday Witch, tarot. Alrighty, here we go, y'all. Here is that bridge shuffle thing. That bridge shuffle thing. <laughs> Woo! Smooth. Good night? Okay, bye. Or do you mean good evening? Hello. I always get so confused when you're all like... Good night. <clears throat> you know? Like, whoa, I just woke up from a nap. And y'all are saying good night already? <clears throat> y'all... You mean hello? Oh, hi. Ugh. But yes, y'all, when I do that bridge shuffle for anyone that is new here, when I do the bridge shuffle, that is the green light for y'all to send me scissors or anything sharp and pointy of the emoji variety so that I may cut this deck and we will get right into the Aquarius reading. Uh, thank you for the rose there. Oh, yes. That's how this works, y'all. Some of you are well aware and are familiar. Others are, of you are probably new to the concept. But yes, I do not do any uh, personal readings. I don't ask for your information. I don't hand out my information. Besides, I live in Ohio. Uh, Pisces will be in about 50 minutes. 50 minutes for Pisces. Thank you all, Pisces, for your patience. But neither here nor there. Thank you all for interacting with me. Let's hope for a good reading. Yes. Uh, knock on wood, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and cut the deck. <clears throat> Alrighty. Aquarius, sun, moon, and or rising. Here we go. Here is your energy. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Here is the challenge. Here is your person's energy. Here is the similarities between you both. And here is the advice slash possible outcome. All right. Sweet. Any new Aquariuses are definitely welcome. Uh, one more time, y'all. Hit that follow button if you are new. Hit that like button if you like the energy I bring to the Tarot TikTok table. And hit that share button with a family member, a friend, a coworker, anyone 
of any sign, for that matter. Um, Y'all, I've got five cards here on the tarot TikTok table. Here in about 19 minutes, 18 or 19, give or take, we will clarify with five more cards, one card per each placement within the spread. And then we will recap for any new folks just now joining the live stream at that time. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get right on into it, shall we? All right, so we have the Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups and your energy, Aquarius. Some of y'all are thinking of a partnership with a specific person. It does not have to be anyone specific. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a romantic situation or a romantic reading, per se. Keep in mind uh, to take what resonates, leave out the rest. Uh, but for this reading, we will say that, it, yes, it is a, a romantic example. But keep in mind, it does not have to be, so take what resonates, leave out the rest. So for this reading, let's say you are thinking of someone specific or maybe you're trying to define what happily ever after would look like with the definition of your perfect person, Aquarius. I hope I'm saying that um, in the right way, expressing this in the right way. If you have a specific person, awesome. That would make it a lot easier for me to uh, express happily ever after with the Ten of Cups, what the Ten of Cups uh, interpretations could mean for the Aquarius. <clears throat> if not, maybe you're trying to come up with a definition of, you know, you're a perfect person. That's literally all it has to be. Uh, but yes, the Ten of Cups is happily ever after, at least in the imagination. Otherwise, if it was in the environment, it would be the Ten of Pentacles. The number 10 being a number in tarot and numerology of completion. No, I have not done the Pisces reading yet. Uh, definitely hit that follow button if you are new here. But also, um, set your alarm for Sundays. Or Sundays. Saturdays. Saturdays. Here is the banner. Pisces is at 730. It is now 644 here in Ohio. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Um, but yes, the Ten of Cups for Aquarius, it could be, not a problem. Uh, it could be that you, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, and or Rising, are trying to imagine what happily ever after would be like, would even feel like, with maybe a specific person. For this reading, let's say it is a specific person. And if you don't have a specific person, then change the example to, you know, just the definition of your perfect definition or idea of a perfect person for you, Aquarius. Uh, yes, if you are to hold that feeling of this is what it would feel like to have happily ever after with this specific person, just hold on to that feeling like, wow, I'm going to wake up every day and any second that specific person is going to text me saying, hey, I'm ready. Let's do this. No obstacles, no insecurities. I'm ready. I'm ready when you are, Aquarius. I'm sure it's a little uh, more different than y'all are uh, expecting it to be as I'm expressing it, but nonetheless, I'm doing my best. Uh, with the Eight of Wands and the challenge, maybe you find it challenging to have some sort of fast forward uh, movement or momentum with this individual, with someone specific. One of y'all said they're a Leo, okay. Um, maybe you're expecting things to go in your favor, to go your way, but there's no speed, there's no momentum picking up. Maybe you're finding it challenging to adjust to some changes that need to be made at this time. Or maybe this individual isn't uh, messaging you 
Maybe they aren't even, um, you know, giving clarity on what they want out of the relationship. Um, it's hard what all else to say about the, the Eight of Wands. Because this is, this is usually fast forward movement. It's a momentum of sorts. You know, the Eight of Wands could also talk about Cupid's arrows in some decks. Um, but in the challenge, it's a lack of Cupid's arrows, let's say. Maybe there's no messages coming through from this individual, but you're still trying to hold that feeling until it manifests in the 3D, until this individual contacts you, no matter what form of contact. All right, now this individual, they seem to be coming in fast. And what direction towards you or away from you, I'm not aware of. We definitely wanna to have to clarify I'm not sure if this individual is distracted. The Knight of Swords can be someone that's like, ooh, shiny, I wanna go after it. <clears throat> or, ooh, a puppy, there I go, right? Uh, the Knight of Swords also could be a knight in shining armor. Uh, someone who tries to plan for a rescue mission So I don't know if you, Aquarius, need rescuing. Uh, maybe this person is uh, in White Knight Syndrome and they feel like the Aquarius needs saving. I don't know if any of y'all are going to uh, subscribe to that or resonate with it. But why, what else uh, could this person be going towards? Keep in mind, the Knight of Swords is someone uh, well, it's the fastest knight of the deck. The fastest knight of the deck. So with uh, with that being said, y'all can use your imagination as to what this person could be doing. Gemini Ascendant, but set in his freeways. White knight. About 50 people. Okay. Um, so yeah. What could this person be going after? Uh, keep in mind, the person that the Aquarius, uh, Gucci, 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 thank you for that. Um, this person, I don't know what they are, uh, what they have their attention on. Maybe the Aquarius. Um, but with the Eight of Wands and the challenge, it doesn't seem so. There's no fast forward movement with the Aquarius in this person. And... The Aquarius is stuck daydreaming about this person, maybe. Um. <coughs> but yes, the Knight of Swords is the fastest... <laughs> ...is the fastest knight in the tarot deck. <coughs> so... What does this person have their attention on if it's not the Aquarius? If things aren't happening for the Aquarius in this person, where is all this energy coming from this person at this time? Where is it going into? Where are they putting all this energy into? Uh, with the Four of Swords and the Common Ground slash similarities between you both, It seems like you two are on a break. Maybe even healing from past, uh, you know, disappointments or rejections. Or uh, maybe grieving um, the death of a family member or a friend or a co-worker. I definitely try not to go into uh, those interpretations. But with the Four of Swords, it, it, yes, could be healing from all those. <clears throat> it also could be that you both are literally just wanting to take a break from the relationship. Maybe meditating, contemplating on an issue that you both have. 
grieving and past relationship. Oh, grieving past relationship. Gotcha. Um, this is a weird reading because here we have this person charging in towards something or someone. It's just disrespect to himself, like me too, I suppose. Hmm. They moved on? Oh, goodness. Well, yeah, I I'm... I'm picking up something about this person just, like, either going away from this relationship, excited about something, excited about putting energy uh, elsewhere, because here you are daydreaming about them. Uh, daydreaming possibly about a situation that doesn't have any fast-forward movement or momentum, or maybe you feel like there's a lot of changes that either of you are uh, finding it challenging to adjust to. It could be that you both are healing from each other or taking a break from each other, contemplating any issues or problems you may have. Come back from this relationship, okay. And uh, with the Page of Swords, Page of Swords, it definitely could be that your possible outcome is that you'll end up uh, curious about what they are doing, what they end up, uh, you know, their next moves, their intentions, their feelings. <clears throat> the uh, Page of Swords is the detective of the tarot deck. Uh, this is also the, the spy, you know, so maybe you end up spying on them on their social media to try to figure out what they're up to, their next intentions, their next move. You know how they're feeling about you or maybe you're just like only curious maybe you're ending up uh, you know being curious about someone else who knows with the uh, the page of swords it could be that maybe you're curious about someone new we all have a life though and spend time doing what we want so need more awareness of real sciences um y'all Are y'all going to end up um, spying on an ex that y'all just broke up with? With the Page of Swords spying on their social media? No matter what platform? I only have Facebook and TikTok and YouTube. That's literally it. No Snapchat. No uh, Instagram. I'm pretty boring. I live under a rock. Although I am not a... <clears throat> I'm not an Aquarius, so... I do have an Aquarius buddy that uh, doesn't have any social media either, so maybe Aquarius and I, the Leo, aren't so different after all. Lead detective, right? Uh, Y'all, I'm going to go ahead and start shuffling for the last half of the reading, and we will definitely clarify and get a, a deeper look into this reading. She said, I'm Aquarius. I don't check on anyone. It definitely uh, could be. I don't think if I would ever, uh, I don't think I would ever speak for my whole, uh, you know, zodiac sign like that. Got downloads, had to confirm. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, I'm not sure if I could go onto uh, a tarot reader's platform and be like, I'm a Leo, therefore I can never reach out to my ex. Like, um, do you speak for all Leos there, Rick? Because, I mean, I would actually be lying. I've done it plenty of times, you know? Maybe that says uh, something about my uh, boundaries or lack thereof, but... We all each have the power of free will. He said, my Leo stalks me. Bah! Well, I mean, would you stalk you? In that sense, can you blame him? I'm Aquarius, and I can't understand a no-contact deal. I I totally uh, get that as well. All right, I don't get that, but I get where you're coming from. Good stuff and some hard stuff. 
yes. I have no one to check on. That's why I don't do it. Aw. I do stalk me. <laughs> I mean, I sometimes uh, stalk my TikTok page. Wondering uh, when the next time that Rick guy from Free Will Tarot is going to post more money. Uh, money? Morning readings. They posting any new readings? No, he has not. Oh wait, this is my TikTok. <laughs> we both stuck. Oh, okay. That's fun. <clears throat> so y'all are just in feminine energy and divine feminine energy just watching each other. That's that's fun. I can see that. Alrighty. Alrighty. Give this deck a few more shuffles. Diplomatic action with emotional intelligence. Do I match with Leo? Um. You said you're an Aquarius? Failure to appear for show ins in shackles. Shackles? Where is this coming from? I mean, I'd like to think I myself as a Leo guy get along with Aquarius women. Um, whether or not they get along with me is a whole other story, I guess. You know? I'm not sure if it's my uh, Scorpio moon or because of my Virgo rising or if it's literally because of my Leo sun. They're probably too aloof for a direct direct living Leo. Possibly. There is your last bridge shuffle, y'all, with the new deck. Aquarius so aloof. Oh, yes. They are. But actually, that's kind of what I like about them. I love Aquariuses because that aloofness it, uh, keeps things fresh. And, I mean, when it comes to, like, my food, my daily routines and habits, you can usually predict what I, myself, um, am I am going to do, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. But then when Aquarius comes in, they're like, hey, let's do this. This is different. Let's uh, have this type of conversation or let's go for a drive out in this direction. And it's like, whoa, okay. You know, I like that. I like spontaneity. I don't necessarily like things to be uh, stale and stagnant and the same thing over and over again. I love adventure you know as long as I'm back home in time to do my uh, TikTok tarot readings and practice my crazy fixed signs are like that <laughs> but yes y'all that was the last bridge shuffle for the Aquarius definitely send me some scissors send me some scissors and I will cut this deck with them Leos are very creative, all. Oh, I'm an Aquarius. When I let go, I let go. Hey, I don't blame you. I do not blame you. Alrighty. I love having these uh, random conversations with y'all. One of these days... Uh, on a Sunday, I'll, I'll come on. How do I send scissors? Um, I think you might have to type it out in your, uh, your, your typity board. And then when it pops up on the, uh, when it pops up in the emoji options, you can just click it and then send. <coughs> I think that's how that works. I'm actually not really sure, though. I've never uh, been on the other side of my tarot readings. With clothes and shoes, hard to find. Gentry, what are you talking about? My first time on here, says Maria from California. Whoa, love your energy. Thank you so much. It's an Aquarius moon today. Ooh, 
How do I send scissors? <clears throat> y'all. Thank y'all for showing up tonight. <laughs> Thank y'all for showing up for reels. It's much appreciated. Clip emoji. Type in scissors. Yes. It's in the light bulb icon if you have an iPhone. You're most welcome. Sweet. Alrighty, y'all. Um, let's just go ahead and get on into it, shall we? It's raining here. And the power went out. Uh-oh. Are you saying that this is literally the only place you have to be because it's raining? Well, I, I feel honored that y'all chose to hang out with me at this moment. So thank you so much. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the last half of the Aquarius reading, shall we? Thank y'all for uh, interacting with me. All right, one more time, hit that follow button if you have not done so, hit that like button, and hit the share button. Uh, no matter with what area of life the friends, family member, or coworkers are in. Y'all, let's get into it. All right, so we are clarifying the Ten of Cups in your energy, Aquarius. Hmm. Clarifying the Eight of Wands in the challenge. Clarifying the Knight of Swords in this person's energy. Clarifying the Four of Swords and the similarities and common ground between you both. And, huh. Clarifying the Page of Swords in your possible outcome slash advice. Alrighty, Aquarius. As I mentioned, I'm going to be using the Witch's Tarot, a totally different deck from the one I used, or from the, yeah, same reading, but two different decks. Um, there's nothing too exciting about that here in this reading, though, so it is what it is. But maybe in the future you'll have, you know, two of the same cards, either in the same placement or different placements. Um, but yes, your first card, as we recap, then clarify as we go... Being two, uh, ten of cups, it could be that you're imagining happily ever after or wanting happily ever after. No matter if it's with this person or someone in general, maybe you are thinking about getting out there into the dating scene and finding out, you know, is this type of person my type? Is this archetype of person my type? Uh, thank you all, Pisces, for being patient with me. The Pisces reading will be about 26 minutes. Um, but also Aquarius, with the Two of Swords, it's almost like you're blocking your, your heart chakra. It's almost as if you're blocking your heart space, and maybe you and your heart are in a stalemate at this time. Like, nope, I don't even want to be in a relationship. It's like, yeah, maybe one of these days. I'll have happily ever after, but at this time, I'm not wanting to, uh, you know, feel those feelings. They make me cringe every time I have feelings, and I don't want to have feelings anymore. I just want to love and cuddle on my kitty and my doggy, and, you know, in fact, I'm sick of being hurt. Dang, I actually am, because I need... To get a job and support myself, this energy needs channeling. Hmm. He said literally. And, I mean, it definitely could be with the Eight of Wands that you find it challenging to have some sort of fast-forward movement, especially with this specific individual. Maybe there's a lack of messages coming through from this person. tired of trusting and getting cheated on I've been healing for nine months there you go happy to be alone after all okay <clears throat> um, it definitely could be that you and this individual 
maybe not you and this individual necessarily, I usually try to have the intentions that the challenge placement within the spread is just for the person I'm reading for, you know, and then the common ground or the similarities can be, you know, part of who this person is, get a deeper look into who they are so you know who they are, for lack of a better explanation, but got many good ideas. I need to be more grateful. Um, with the Temperance card clarifying the Eight of Wands, it definitely could be that, yes, you're finding it challenging to have some sort of fast-forward movement with this person, maybe a lack of messages, even. Um, and it's almost like you, you both... Not you both. It's almost like you, Aquarius, find it challenging to create a uh, positive outcome out of something negative in this situation. Why the hell I can't move on from M? I did everything possible to do so. Hmm. I mean, it could be that you're needing to create a uh, happy, positive outcome, not just for you and this individual, you know, but uh, for yourself. It could be that all the love and energy motivation, passion you have for this person, <clears throat> you need, you might need to uh, put all of that into yourself. With the temperance card, it could be that you find it challenging to do things in moderation, meaning maybe you are doing things in excess, as in overindulging, no matter if it's, uh, you know, overeating, over drinking, over sleeping, over giving to others, you know, are you putting yourself as a priority there, Aquarius? Or are you doing things in excess and overdoing and overgiving, you know what I'm saying? Which can be quite unhealthy. This is actually resonating. Had an argument with my boyfriend over that. Uh-oh. Makes sense. Stay in this free world. Love yourself and find your self-worth. Yes. Um... Maybe you have lost patience for this person. The temperance card does talk about uh, being patient with oneself, maybe even patient with others. This definitely could scream about um, just not the right time. Not the right time. But, I mean, have you all ever heard the quote or the uh, cliche saying that now is the right time? So it's like, okay, well, maybe that's this person's excuse. Maybe that's your excuse. For some, uh, for some of you, that is, for all I know. But, I mean, is there really a right time? Sure, maybe uh, in the next six months, the Aquarius will be more healed. You know, not so in a stalemate. Not so stalemate with their uh, heart space. <clears throat> now, you have an individual... that is going after something or someone, they have their attention on something, it's almost like this person uh, sees something shiny, and they're like, oh, here I go after it. Oh, squirrel, oh, there I go after it. You know? The Knight of Swords is the fastest knight in the tarot deck, as I mentioned before in the first half of the reading. And it could be that maybe they're charging towards uh, putting all this energy into maybe an earth sign. It doesn't have to be. Um, it definitely could be that they are going towards someone in a in feminine energy. Someone they feel is reliable, dependable, uh, knows their own worth, you know, knows what they bring to the table. Um, or they literally just could be putting all this energy they have into themselves, into becoming a more worthy, I don't know why I was thinking opponent, a, a more worthy opponent for themselves, uh, it would make more sense if I said, you know, a more worthy option, either for the Aquarius or option for anyone. 
when will you be doing the Pisces reading? The Pisces reading is about 19 minutes from now. The schedule is right here, the banner, bottom right-hand corner, two zodiac signs tonight, Monday through Saturday. You heard opponent too? Yeah. I don't know why I kept thinking opponent, but it was like, option, Rick, option. If this person, you know, wants to better themselves, I don't know why I would have said opponent, you know? There's no uh, game when it comes to relationships. If you if you think relationships are a game, then you're uh, you're doing life wrong in general. You're doing life wrong in general. You know, because uh, people die from heartache all the time, from heartbreak all the time. So while you're playing games with people's hearts and stringing them along and all this other jazz, it's like, hey, that's your karma. Keep doing what you're doing, I guess, but, you know, you're free of the choices, but you're not free of the consequences. Not free of the consequences. <clears throat> I mean, I'm sure that wasn't even necessary to say, but, you know, because I think opponent in my head, and then I go off in a tangent, but hey, maybe that's uh, helping me with time management with this reading. But yes... It very well could be that they want to be a better option for you, Aquarius. Let me say that all over again, right? Not opponent. I'm not sure if this person is uh, playing games or if they're serious about their relationships. It, it could be that they are serious. They mean business when it comes to their relationships. That's why they're wanting to put more effort into becoming a better option for maybe the, the Aquarius or maybe someone else. Um, I do find it interesting that both of you are maybe taking a break from this uh, relationship. With the Four of Swords, it could be that you both are wanting to heal from each other, from someone else. Someone else, I would say. Okay. Um, maybe not for this instance, but you're saying someone else, uh, that, that they create a better option out of themselves. But yes, you both are taking a break from each other. Maybe with the uh, Four of Swords. Maybe contemplating any issues or problems you both might have had within this dynamic you both share. And then clarifying the Four of Swords with the Fool card. It definitely screams to me that, yeah, you both are willing to take a leap of faith in a new direction. <clears throat> Here is the Aquarius. And here is this person in their environment, you know, looking into the uh, horizon, about to take that leap of faith off of this cliff or a mountain, whichever the case. <clears throat> about to take a leap of faith and trusting that the universe will catch them if they fall or make a misstep or a mistake. If you and this person, Aquarius, were not meant to be for each other, then obviously, uh, you know, things would have worked out if you were meant to be in each other's life. The universe is going to send you tons of signs, you know, maybe some are obvious, maybe some are not so obvious, but yeah, the universe is going to send you tons of signs like, hey, you should go in this direction. Or, you know that good feeling you get when you're around that specific person? Yeah, it's a good feeling. You should go in that direction. This person is good for you. <clears throat> Obviously, there's a, or not so obvious. I keep saying that, but um, if y'all are sent in a direction that feels good, but then it ends up turn, uh, turning bad for you, you obviously learned a lesson. And whether you wanted to learn a lesson or not, I mean, it helped you grow, right? It helped you grow. It helped you become a better version of yourself. It's like, uh, it's like a tarot reading, you know? Once you see something, you can't unsee it. Once the brain learns something, finds a, a new 
you know, some new information about either a person or a situation or the, uh, the way you behave. You know, once, once you learn about astrology, you can't go back. You can't go back. Your brain, like, stretches. It, uh, what's the word I want to use? It expands, you know? Once, once you learn something, it, the, the brain doesn't go back to that same size. When you become aware, you can't ignore it. Exactly. Exactly. It's so, like, uh, astrology, it's so, like, tarot. Tarot and astrology are good examples of that. It's like, once you learn about it, it's like, you can't go back. There's no, you know, turning back unless you, like, bump your head and get amnesia or, you know, lose your memory in one way, shape, or form. I believe I was sent as a blessing for this person to heal them. I haven't learned so much. Okay. Y'all, we have two cards left for the Aquariuses. Page of Swords, meaning maybe you are a... If this is the possible outcome, it could be that some... I can't remember who I was before astrology, right? Isn't that crazy? Uh, I'm a Leo, by the way, for those that ask what my sign is. I have learned so much. Sorry, I need my glasses. <laughs> but yeah, it could be with the Page of Swords. If this is the possible outcome, some of you... And you don't have to, you know, you don't have to let me know if it's true or not. Um, maybe, you know, some of y'all want to seem more aloof, you know, less, uh, less, uh, less uh, what do I want to say? Well, maybe y'all want to stay in this energy rather than the Ten of Cups energy. But neither here nor there, some of you, not all, I'm sure, but are going to keep an eye on this individual uh, I wouldn't say stock their social media per se. Just keep an eye on them, you know? Check them out from time to time. Maybe uh, every night when you watch these Aquarius readings. Doesn't have to be. Uh, but if this is the advice, the universe is wanting you to keep an eye on this individual. To be curious. <clears throat> because there might be something your way coming your way you explaining very well congrats hey thank you so much there might be something exciting in store for you depending on uh, who this person is to you now obviously if this person was abusive or neglectant or wasn't treating you fairly then this reading isn't meant for you but there's something about this person that I'm describing that they are rushing towards maybe building their self-worth, you know, maybe creating a business. For some of you, that can resonate. Maybe this person is trying to become more stable financially so that they can give to the relationship. You know, the Queen of Pentacles definitely is someone that has a lot of tools and resources, a lot to give, not just money, you know what I mean? Not just money. A lot of resources, a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom, you know? It could be that maybe they are learning up a specific topic to help the Aquarius out, uh, you know, for their uh, field of work or career field. It doesn't have to be. Um, but there's definitely something that might excite you about this individual if you keep an eye on them you might receive some sort of good news if you're at least um, staying attached to them in some way, shape, or form. I don't want to say attached per se, you know, like like the Aquariuses are possessive or something. Maybe some of you are, but that doesn't usually seem like a uh, an Aquarius trait to be attached or possessive. I always get the, uh, the feeling that they're more so, uh, well, like avoidant. I wouldn't say that either, though. Aloof. That's that's really the only word, you know, that can describe uh, an Aquarius. Sabotaged. Oh, definitely 
it for me. Just completely toxic. They self-sabotaged every couple of weeks. Oh, no. Goodness gracious. He does have that. Need honest, trustworthy feedback, but no feedback loop. Well, y'all, um, I do hope that helps. I think uh, this is what I got for you, though. Aloof describes my Aquarius I've met. Thanks, Blaze, baby. I watched Libra yesterday. Much appreciate your role. Y'all, I think that's what I have for the Aquarius. Not for me. Can't find my damn glasses. <laughs> Thanks. Love to read. Awesome sauce, y'all. Uh, do keep in mind this only has to be for entertainment. Um, it can be helpful. It can be insightful. And I do try to put my intentions in doing so. That it be either educational, that y'all learn something about the cards in general, or y'all get, you know, some message <clears throat> to either hold on to this person or to let them go or to allow them, you know, be a part of the solution or to release them so they're no longer a part of the problem, right? What does aloof mean? Girl, what? Literally and figuratively speaking, girl, what? No, I'm just kidding. But can't wait for Tuesday. Sweet. Um, aloof, I want to say is like unpredictable. Like, um, you know, maybe at one split second, they seem cold, detached, unemotional, unavailable emotionally. And then the next second, they want to be like all over you. And uh, lovey-dovey and cuddles and you know what I'm saying? I've never really had that, uh, that the best of luck with Aquarius is in that sense. Like, you know, when it comes to their, their cuddles and their, uh, wanting to be in my, in my bubble, I've never had that luck. So if y'all do have an Aquarius in your life, uh, cherish them. Don't take them for granted. We are a bit a bit different. <laughs> Do you believe in luck? Um, it depends. Isn't, um, isn't luck just, uh, being prepared and then, you know, for the right opportunity? I don't know where I'm, uh, where I've heard that. I just think he's intimidated. Oh no, perfect reading. Thank you. Carefree is distant. Different. Oh, I know what you mean. I, I knew what you mean when you uh, spell different wrong. No worries, though. I've had two Aquarius best friends. They hated each other, and it was the most petty, hilarious thing. Oh no, that's no good. Yeah, I actually would have uh, loved to experience petty. You mean pretty. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, you mean pretty. It was the most pretty thing I've ever seen. It was hilarious. I, I can't see me using the word pretty in that sentence, but... <laughs> I said I wish. Yeah, I would have loved to experience uh, the love of an Aquarius, but I'm very grateful for the love of a Gemini at this time. Aquarius are free spirits, but I think it's harder for them to take a decision than to stay in indecisive and indecision. Oh, instead. Gotcha. We love hard, but once trust is lost, we out. That's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate because, yeah, trust is hard to regain.
I think um, a big thing for Aquarius is they like stability. And also, the relationship has to be logical. You know, just because I have emotions for you doesn't mean it's logical to have emotions for you. You know? Let's say I can't necessarily give the world to an Aquarius, so what sense does it make for the Aquarius to have feelings for me? Even though at first when they meet me, sure, they might have, you know, feelings for me, but then it's like, okay, well, you can't even give to the relationship, you know, as much as I can. So it's not, it's, it's illogical, you know, to pour into this relationship. It just does not make sense to me, you know? Which I could see how some Aquariuses, you know, would think that. You know? But any Hoosers, y'all, definitely hit that follow button if you have not done so at this time. Uh, hit that like button and definitely hit the share button, maybe with a specific Pisces in your life. Thank you, Aquariuses. Gucci, Gucci, Goo! Thank you, Aquariuses, for uh, stopping by. You're more than welcome to stay and watch the Pisces reading, especially if you are a cross-watcher um, and or are watching, um, you know, for a specific Pisces in your life. Uh, thank you, Jess Marie, for, what is that, team bracelet? Are you asking me if I have a girlfriend? We talk supposedly coming out of 2000 year eon. Oh, you're saying uh, going out of the Pisces, the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius? Pisces North Node, okay. only speak for me as an Aquarius, but as long as they are true, I'm there. Hmm. Yeah, for the, for the individual that asked if I have a girlfriend, I think, yes, Mr. Rick. Uh, yes, I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily have a girlfriend, but I am talking to a Gemini out there. Anytime I, uh, say, Hello to a Miss Sugary. That's sugar with two E's at the end. Uh, that is that is my woman. That's the woman I'm talking to. She's been very patient with me for the last, <clears throat> I don't know, two or three months now. Maybe almost four. And yeah, that that is uh, definitely appreciated from her. That's what I love about Geminis, is uh, their optimism, their positive mindset. It's like, how do you do it? How do you stay so positive, you know? And you don't even falter. Like, that's that's uh, something... That's something I, uh, yeah, struggle with myself. My Virgo uh, rising, Virgo rising. They stay so busy. Yeah, I suppose that, that could be it, but... I mean, if you're trying to distract from heartbreak, or if you're trying to distract from an issue or a problem, you know what I'm saying? That's, uh, it's not good. Neither here nor there. Um, but yes, I'm talking to a gorgeous Gemini, and don't tell her I said this, but I, I freaking love her to death. Neither here nor there. Yeah, I love everything about her. <clears throat> but any hoosers, y'all. Pisces, what is up? Pisces. I see y'all are... Oh, uh... that's so sweet. She's so damn lucky to have you. Hey, I mean, I'm not sure if she's aware of it, but... She's definitely uh, been loyal for a while now. But neither here nor there. For all the Pisces out there. Pisces, sun, moon, and or rising. Alright, alright. I'm, I'm changing the subject from the lovey-dovey stuff. Uh, no more personal information about me. Y'all are... Y'all are getting too cutesy and... 
you know, in your feels about my love life. Any hoosers, y'all. Uh, thank you for the team bracelet one more time. And thank you for the rose. Alrighty. They said, oh, whatever. <laughs> y'all, let's just get into the Pisces reading, shall we? Where is your Pisces? Anything 12th house? Um, How would I know? Is that rising would that be sixth house if uh virgo rising is if virgo is my rising sign wouldn't it be the sixth house that pisces would be in my chart something like that y'all that was the bridge shuffle go ahead and send me scissors Go ahead and send me scissors. The bridge shuffle is the green light. Send me scissors or anything sharp and pointy. As I mentioned uh, for the Aquarius reading, I have been using the Everyday Witch Tarot deck every day. <laughs> this week. I have been using the Everyday Tarot deck every day for the last week, for the last five days. Six including today. That's for the first half of your reading. Then we got the Witch's Tarot that I will be clarifying the last half of the reading. Two different decks. Maybe uh, something cool will happen in this reading. Maybe. Knock on wood. I said love them. Oh yes. That is uh, half the reason I buy tarot decks is for the artwork. Alrighty. Y'all, thank you for uh, interacting with me in the comments. I'm going to go ahead and cut this deck with the emojis y'all have sent my way. Alright, alright, alright. Alright, here we go. Pisces, Sun, Moon, and or Rising, maybe even Venus. Here is your energy. Here is the challenge. Uh-oh. Well, that's not so bad, I guess. Uh, here is your person's energy. Here is the similarities between you both. And the possible outcome slash advice. Uh, what was the shoot for? Layla said shoot. Darn it. Barnacles! Dad, blame it. The face you made, lol. Oh. Whippersnappers. No, that's not a... It's not a curse word you used from back in the day. I guess it could have been used as a curse word, but... Um, y'all. Any hoosers. <laughs> Barnacles! <laughs> uh, so, Pisces, we do have five cards here on the tarot tiktok table here in about 15 minutes 15 no 25 yes 25 minutes give or take 24 maybe we will clarify with five more cards one card per each placement within the spread sorry i'm having hiccups and uh then we will uh recap eat grapes be more chill more Romanesque? Hmm. That would be sweet. That would be sweet. Never thought of it that way. Um, yes, we will clarify with five more cards. One card for each placement. Then we will also recap. Yes, for any new folks, maybe Pisces, maybe not, that show up at that time in about 25 minutes. 24. Um, speaking of which, let me get a quick drink. Let me get a quick drink, y'all. Oh. Alrighty, I'm back. Y'all ever get naked at the grocery store? 
Pretty good stuff. Y'all ever get naked over uh, TikTok Live? I just did. Breaking all the rules, y'all. Pretty good stuff. <laughs> all right. Y'all. Here we go. We have the first card. Four Pisces, Sun, Moon, and or Rising. Here we go. The Six of Swords in the Pisces energy. The Six of... To uh, blah, 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 blah. The Six of Swords does tell me at this time that you are wanting to move away. <laughs> they said reported, JK. <laughs> yeah, please don't report me. It was just a joke. Any hoosers? Oh, that is a really good drink, though. Love that, but you should make your own much cheaper. My own? How do I do that? Well, like a, a blender and some real fruits and stuff like that. If, if any of y'all have the recipe for it, definitely uh, send it my way through the messages. But neither here nor there. <clears throat> uh, Pisces. Six of Swords. Six of Swords in your energy does tell me that you're wanting to move on to calmer waters. Maybe you feel like the person you have been focused on recently, maybe the last week, the last month, the last year, no matter the time frame, it could be that the Six of Swords is an indication that this week you're wanting to move away from this person. You're wanting to, uh, at least mentally, not think about them so much, you know, not uh, focus on their energy so much, what they're doing, their intentions, their next moves, uh, how they're feeling about you. You know, maybe you're just wanting to move on away from the headaches, the misunderstandings, the miscommunications, maybe the self-sabotage for some of you. But yes, you're wanting to move on away from any of uh, the stress. Maybe this was a one-sided relationship, you know, uh, non-reciprocal. No matter the case, it does tell me that you're wanting to, uh, you know, just have a more peaceful life, not wanting to worry about this individual. But at this time, I don't know if you're very successful at that at this time. Because the strength card in the challenge tells me that you're finding it challenging to tame the beast within. It's almost as if you go to, you know, you go to move away into calmer waters and to move on from this person. Then the second they text you, it's like, and you get triggered. It's like, oh, they love me all over again. Sweet. I'm so excited. I'm so excited this person texted me again. Or they, they finally called me again. You know? I almost think this person knows the Pisces a little too well. This person might know Pisces really well. Like, hey, if I leave the Pisces alone for a split second, they might want to move on to calmer waters away from the Pisces. Maybe this person is, uh, I don't want to say this person is manipulative, but they definitely are aware of some uh, behavioral patterns that the Pisces has. You know what? Let's move on away, you know, from the stress into calmer waters. I just want to be at peace. And then this person finally reaches out and it's like, oh, they reached out to me again. Yay, I'm so excited. I can have happiness again. Or you find it challenging to be uh, to be triggered, maybe. You know, maybe this person reaching out to you is very triggering. Uh, hello, Carrie. Uh, that is my name. Rick is my name. Don't worry it out. JK, but yes, Pisces, it could be that you uh, get triggered easily uh, by letting this person in your environment or any time they reach out. You know, it's like, well, what the crap? Where have you been? You know, why, why haven't you been texting me this whole freaking time and then... I give you two days alone, you know, 
not putting any energy into this relationship and then you pop up. Like, why can't you just be consistent when I'm consistent? What the crap? This person in the Six of Cups, yes, Six of Cups, you are in the Six of Swords energy. This person is in Six of Cups. I do feel like that is uh, somewhat synchronistic. Um, however, these are the only sixes, so I don't want anyone freaking out like, is there another six in the reading? It's so synchronistic. I did that once for my sister. Same spread about uh, two years ago. I did a, a spread for my sister and the situation, the challenge, and the similarities between uh, her and another person came out all sixes. And she was like, <gasps> she like started freaking out like, yo, these are just cards. I'm not summoning a, uh, summoning a demon or anything. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> They're cards. I could rip one up right now, and I'm sure y'all would freak out. I would even freak out myself because they're my cards. I want longevity for them, you know? But yeah, they literally are just cardboard. They're paper, you know? Um, so yeah, no superstition is needed for uh, for tarot readings, but any hoosers, y'all. <clears throat> the Six of Cups in this person's energy definitely could be that this person either misses you Six house, carbon, balance, six. Okay. <clears throat> Could be that you have a specific person that misses you. Sure. You know, every time you try to move on, it's like, no, Pisces, where are you going? I don't like this push and pull energy from this person. I'm just going to say that. Maybe y'all love the push and pull. It's so... Uh, addicting for the Pisces, but y'all don't have to escape reality by uh, being addicted by someone's push and pull, you know, game. Outside of the reading, you know, outside of me being a tarot reader, I don't like the push and pull. Sure, that's how you gain attraction, is, you know, the, no, I don't want you, or, yes, come back to me, but no, I can't. I've got too many obligations at this time. Now I'm freed up. Come back to me, Pisces. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Like, I'm sure that can be addicting, but don't y'all get tired of that and just want to move on from the, like, the the push and pull and the, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know I might be a dramatic Leo over here, but, like, come on. What if the Pisces is the push and pull? Uh, I mean, it could be that the Pisces is the push and pull. You know, one fish out of the sea, one fish under the sea. You know, the push, the pull, the push, the pull. Like, I'm sure it's exhausting for a lot of you, but I don't, I don't see... Maybe there is a point to it. Maybe it's the ebb and flow of the universe, you know, just showing up creatively through the Pisces or through this person. But, I mean, it's human nature, I suppose. It's human nature. I am Pisces, and you're correct. I am bipolar at this point. <laughs> I, I'm not saying y'all are bipolar. I'm saying this person um, could see something within the Pisces, you know, a specific behavioral pattern where, you know, that stuff can be addicting. And it's like, if the Pisces doesn't see it, then obviously the Pisces is going to be like, what the heck is going on? You know, why does this person have such a, uh, you know, push and pull on me, such an effect on me? Um, but yeah, it could be that the Pisces just wants to move on in Tacoma waters. But every time this person misses you, you get triggered. Every time they reach out, you get triggered and either love them all over again or you're just like triggered in the sense like, this is driving me crazy. You know, this is such an emotional roller coaster. And sure, I love it as some, you know, to some extent, but like, I'm sure it's driving the Pisces crazy, you know? Uh, making them feel like they are an illusion or like they're confused 
or like, you know, like one second this person misses you and wants you back, but then the second you keep putting in effort and trying to be consistent, you know, like a normal relationship, a normal healthy relationship should be, this person's like, oh no, never mind. The Pisces is being too clingy or I've got other things to deal with. And it's like, what are you talking about? That would drive me bonkers, y'all. This person definitely could be a past life soulmate connection. They don't have to be, but yes, the Six of Cups does talk about past life soulmate connections. Maybe this person is an ex and they want to get back with you, reunite, uh, reconcile differences for some of you. Saturn seems messy. If I'm a Pisces sun and he a Pisces moon, can a reading be mixed? Um, well, which one of you is more into tarot? That's how you will know who this reading is for. That's how you will know who this reading is for. Because usually the other person isn't even into tarot. You know what I'm saying? I mean, sure, it can be a shared uh, interest. These people need to heal and meditate and do their shadow work. And believe me, your mental health clears. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> uh, Y'all, the, similar, the similarities between you both, because there's definitely a difference between you. The Six of Swords tells me you're wanting to move away from this person, either mentally, emotionally, or, you know, physically. And this person, to some degree, misses you. They're very fond of the happy memories with you. So that is the difference between you both. I'm sure you miss them to some degree as well, but like, you're more so, no, get me out of here. Pack my bags and I'm gone. Your intuition will go through the roof and you will make the right choices. You're saying if you do the shadow work. Gotcha. Uh, when it comes to the similarities then, y'all, the Eight of Cups. This does tell me, Pisces, that you have a mess of a situation at your feet or your uh, mermaid fin mermaid fin or a siren fin for some of you that do need to do the shadow work and uh, you know keep calling these folks in uh, seducing them to their death <laughs> JK but I'm just going to throw it out there uh, just to be funny The sim okay, so yes, there is a mess. There is a mess here. I cannot get comfortable. I'm going to need to uh, switch up the seat somehow. I'm a siren for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad y'all can uh, at least have a sense of humor. But yes, the Eight of Cups. Eight of Cups does tell me that this is quite a mess at the, uh, the Pisces feet. In the situation in general. All jokes aside, you and this person have created a mess. It's almost as if, uh, you know, you and this person agreed to do the dishes every other day. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if y'all are taking into account that it takes two to tango, but in order to successfully emotionally detach such as the Eight of Cups suggests that you want to do. Um, it does scream to me that, yeah, you're wanting to be done with this individual. Not only wanting to mentally detach, but emotionally detach. And even though they miss you and are fond of the happy memories that they have made with you, they agree that, yeah, this is a mess. I need to emotionally detach as well. This is the similarities with the Eight of Cups, and I don't know if either of y'all are taking into account that it takes two to tango, uh, but in order to successfully detach emotionally, either you, Pisces, or this person, or both, or just one of you, you know, needs to take accountability for yes. 
I let this person walk all over me. Or I led this person to think that I was good for them. Or that I had good intentions or that I wanted something with them. But then, you know, after all, I I found out that maybe I, I don't want this person after all. You know, I'm only human. I do have the free will right to change my mind, I suppose. But obviously, if you are uh, stringing someone along, it's not very... It's not very fun, and y'all know the feeling of getting strung along. That's uh, that's maybe your karma. You know, if uh, this person strung you along for stringing someone else along before them. Or maybe it's their karma that they uh, strung someone else along, and then the Pisces just so happened to string them along. No matter the case, I don't care how this relationship ended. The point is, it's ending. And it's quite a mess, and y'all need to uh, take accountability for how both of you played a part in this mess, in creating this mess. <clears throat> With that being said, maybe the both of you end up walking away from each other, and because this person isn't willing to let go quite as much as you are with the Six of Swords and the Eight of Cups, Yes, this is the similarities, the Eight of Cups. The similarities, the common ground between you both. But that does not mean they're ready to emotionally detach, to mentally detach, and to physically move on away from the Pisces. Therefore, this person could come after you saying, No, what are you doing? We still have unfinished business. What do you mean you want to get over the stress? That's what we do. That's what we do. We fight. Uh, such as Noah in the notebook said to uh, Rachel McAdams' character. I can't remember her name, but such a lovely actress. One of my favorite actresses. Any Hoosers. Um, yes, Nicholas Sparks, the notebook. Noah. That's uh, Ryan Reynolds. Not Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Gosling? Yes, Ryan Gosling. <coughs> yeah. It's almost as if Ryan Gosling comes after you saying, that's what we do. And Allie, that's right. Yeah, Noah and Allie. Um, that's what we do. We fight. You know, you're a pain in my butt, pain in my neck, and I, I don't remember the line. But yeah, this person is like, no, come back to me, Pisces. I don't agree with you mentally detaching, uh, emotionally detaching. And wanting to give up on this relationship. I feel like this is a past life soulmate connection, says this person. Where do you think you're going? And your advice and or possible outcome could be with the seven of wands. That you just end up pushing this person away. Not caring about their opinions. Not caring about what they think the Pisces should do. Standing your ground. Standing up for yourself and what you believe in, and what you're saying, and in what you're doing, mostly. Standing up for your own self. Standing your ground. The gods give gifts and curses, maybe same. How to deal with correctly. Gentry, you are um, either a confusing soul, and or a very deep uh, soul with a lot of depth, and some of your questions make me think. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but I like thinking. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll keep you around. <laughs> um, it's definitely the Pisces being delusional. Um, Miss Gay82, are you a Pisces yourself? Are you a Pisces yourself? Because if not... Uh, do try to keep it PG-13 if you are a cross-watcher. I do appreciate that. Because <clears throat> only the Pisces can say that the Pisces is delusional. You know? Even I wouldn't say that. Sure, I would say it, like, maybe in passing to, like, like jokingly. But even then, it's like, uh... 
Need comprehensive, not narrow-minded. We are always delusional to someone. I took accountability already, and I'm the Pisces. There you go. Hey, as long as you are taking accountability, that's all that matters. But it, it doesn't seem like this person... doesn't seem like this person... Uh, Sorry, Rick, I'll be quiet. No, you don't have to, but, like, um, you know, there's a, definitely a time and place for everything. There's definitely a time and place for everything. So if if it's, uh, you know, knowledge, if it's deep conversations you want, definitely hit me up, man. I'm Pisces trying to move on, but somehow he keeps pulling me back. I feel like I has backup plan. Backup plan or rebound or uh, putting you on the back burner. I can't stand that. It's like, make up your freaking mind. You know? Hopefully, uh, y'all ain't dealing with a Leo. I don't think you would be you would be dealing with a Leo, but Leos are usually, like, all in or all out. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, get y'all a Leo. <laughs> I might be uh, terrible at promoting myself, but, uh, yeah, I'll promote the heck out of my Leos, out of my Leo collective. Pisces, married to a Libra here. Our relationship has been absent for a year, but he doesn't want it. What the crap? Same here, but sometimes the other person denies that I took accountability. Oh, well, I'm strong. There you go. I like that attitude. I like that perspective. Uh, he's a Cancer, I am Pisces. I thought Pisces and Leo weren't compatible. Actually, they can be very compatible. Pisces and Leo can be very compatible, but at the same time, um, the Pisces has to really like keep the Leo's attention sure the leo is uh you know just fine with validating pisces emotions and taking care of you know their emotional needs the pisces emotional needs but at the same time uh leo needs attention as well had a tiny bit of gummy teeny Okay. I thought Cancer and Pisces get along. I mean, I, I suppose they can. They're both water signs. This makes me so sad I have fallen for a Pisces, and he acts like he wants me, then disappears. That's uncool. Not to be confused with uncle. I might be Uncle Rick to some, but that does not mean, uh, that does not mean I'm uncool. He doesn't want us to be over. I mean, y'all know what the definition of toxic is, huh? Huh? I'm gonna ask. You all know what the definition of toxic is. The definition of toxic is not wanting to leave you alone, not wanting to leave you be uh, by yourself in your own company and to heal, but they don't want to treat you right either. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to treat you right, but then they don't want to leave you alone either. They don't want to see you with anyone else. They're possessive, they're jealous, they're insecure, they want to control the situation. Yeah, we all can be toxic at times, but it's like, you know, that's that's part of the uh, the shadow work we need to do, you know? What do I have to do to become more safe and secure within myself? Therefore, I can create safety and security for someone else. You know, do I have to exercise more so that I'm more secure in myself, that my self-esteem is rising, that my, you know, you know what I'm saying? Oh goodness, they said I'm toxic. Not me, myself, but someone said in the comments, I'm toxic, literally. Forget, oh. 
That sounds like my Sag, LOL. Oh, goodness gracious. Y'all, definitely hit that follow button if you have not done so. I just seen someone hit that follow button. It is uh, greatly appreciated. Hit that like button if you like the energy I bring to the tick. The tarot TikTok table. <laughs> Sheesh. Hit the like button if you like the energy I bring to the tarot TikTok table. And yes, hit the share button, especially if you have a friend, family member, coworker that has Pisces in their chart. Or maybe you have a friend, family member, coworker that just loves tarot and they're looking for a new creative tarot reader. With that being said, let's go ahead and uh, do the clarification for this reading. Y'all, also check out my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel. The link to my YouTube channel is in the bio here on TikTok, my TikTok account. Go to my TikTok account maybe after this live stream. Maybe after this live stream and yes, definitely give my YouTube uh, channel a subscribe. Neither here nor there, this is the last time I will ask y'all for scissors or anything sharp and pointy. Anything sharp and pointy. There is the bridge shuffle. That was the bridge shuffle, y'all. The bridge shuffle. The bridge shuffle. The bridge shuffle. Aquarius are finicky. Eh, they're aloof. I love how finicky they are. The, it, it makes it more of a challenge. But I mean, like I said, I'm not dealing with a uh, Gucci Gucci Goo. I'm not dealing with any Aquariuses at this time. Uh, I don't even know what my uh, what my Gemini woman it, um, her signs are you'd think I'd choose someone that was more into astrology but I mean she likes it did something happen to your Sag Capricorn reading on your YouTube only 26 minutes uploaded huh I don't know I have no clue I have no clue. Y'all, I literally just show up, you know, hit the live button. Sometimes it gets a little freezy in the live stream. Sometimes, uh, you know, stuff happens. Uh, and I either have to unplug my charger or plug it in. You know, plug my charger in. Plug my phone into the charger. Or my charger into the phone, whatever the case. Sometimes stuff happens, y'all. Like the Wi Fi will act crazy, or, um, yeah. I don't know. My thing is, I try to download it from TikTok, and sometimes, like today, with the, uh, with last, uh, well, yeah, that's it. Last, uh, the last reading was literally Sagittarius and Capricorn. I tried to download it um, last night and this morning. It wouldn't let me, uh, probably because of the uh, Wi-Fi being used all day, but neither here nor there. I was having complications with that uh, reading and then uploading it to YouTube. I'm not sure what happened. I do apologize, but there's only so many things that are under my control. And, uh, you know, what TikTok allows me to do versus what YouTube allows me to do uh, it's not under my control. Sure, if I had uh, better equipment, I could do it all by myself. You know, have a... Uh, you, you know what I'm saying. Neither here nor there, though. Uh, I do apologize that it was only 20, 26 minutes, if that's uh, the case. But yeah, y'all, I do have to end this reading at uh, here in about 20 minutes. Are Pisces very emotional? Do we need a long time to move on? Yeah, I'm sorry, you are fine. Um, I mean, is it easy for any sign to get over anyone, really? i say give yourself a good six months to get over a specific person. I mean, the more you put into a relationship, the more your ego is going to tell you no. Look at all this effort, all this time, all this energy you put into this person, into this connection. Look at all of this time and energy, effort, blood, sweat, and tears that you put into this person. You're just going to walk away from them? That's your ego talking. You know? You're going to get in your ego the second you start thinking about 
all the time, money, effort, energy, blood, sweat, and tears that you put into another person, and they're just wasting that time, money, energy, taking you for granted, you know? And then that's why we get so upset and in our ego, like, why won't you just commit to me, you know? Just commit to me. That's all I'm asking. Be as consistent as I am. Some people are just not ready for that, though. And we have to meet them at their level and be like, okay, someone else is ready for that. You know, some some people are ready for what you're ready for and others just aren't. Uh, Y'all, with that being said, I'm definitely going to cut this deck with the scissors and swords and anything sharp and pointy that y'all sent my way. Let's go ahead and clarify this reading. And then we have to end this video um, a little early so that I can download it and then upload it to YouTube. Download from TikTok, upload to YouTube, yes. All right, clarifying the Pisces energy, sun, moon, and or rising being six of swords. <clears throat> Clarifying the strength card in your challenge. Huh. Clarifying the six of cups in this person's energy. Clarifying the eight of cups. Eight of cups. Uh, in the similarities slash common ground or shared experience. And clarifying the seven of wands and your possible outcome slash advice. Alrighty, y'all. Thank you for interacting with me in the comments. It is greatly appreciated. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, I do have to cut this reading short at least five minutes before 30 after. Five minutes before 30 after. But yes, I do have, what, 22, so about 17 minutes. Yeah, let's, let's get into it then, y'all. All right, your first card. Being the Six of Swords, this does tell me that you're wanting to move on into calmer waters. Move away from the stress, the drama, the misunderstandings, the miscommunications, the self-sabotage, the push, the pull, the push again, the pull again. It's got to be exhausting, I'm sure. 808 on the clock. Ooh. That's my birthday, actually. 808, for any of y'all that were curious. No, we weren't curious about Aaliyah's birthday on a Pisces reading. Duh, Rick. Go away. Bring back the tarot reader, Rick. Here I am. I don't know where that even came from, y'all. I'm just, uh, I'm just here. Two of Cups, though. This does tell me, yes, maybe you're wanting to see eye to eye with another individual. Someone who has, or someone whom you have mutual love for mutual respect, mutual understanding, mutual acceptance. These are all very important for a relationship, uh, especially if it's a friendship. It does not have to be romantic. It definitely could be that you're wanting to uh, align your mental capacity with your emotional compa uh, capacity to some extent with the Two of Cups. Maybe you're just wanting to get along with yourself, finally, not wanting to be at, uh, you know, so conflicted and so, you know, disagreeing with yourself, let's say. Yeah, it definitely could be any relationship, but it definitely could be that you're wanting to move on into calmer waters away from a specific relationship or towards a relationship. Uh, definitely take what resonates and leave out the rest, but the strength card and the challenge does tell me that any time you try to move away from a specific person or maybe even get into another relationship, you have a specific person in your environment or outside your personal bubble that triggers you. That triggers you. With the strength card and the challenge, it feels challenging to tame the beast within to not be so triggered. with the five of wands clarifying the strength card it's almost as if yes i want to move on into calmer waters maybe into a new relationship maybe away from this old relationship 
but there's something that keeps triggering you. There's uh, something that uh, keeps making it challenging or difficult to tame the beast within. Some sort of conflict, like I mentioned earlier. Conflicting uh, within the Pisces. It's like, inner conflict, sure. If you're trying to avoid an outer conflict, it's going to grow within you. It's going to grow within the Pisces. Maybe as like disagreements with yourself, like you're wanting to start a war with yourself, then starting wars with other people. Like, no, I just want to heal this conflict. And it's with this person. That's why you keep uh, having wars with other people. That's why you keep bleeding onto other people because you're so conflicted about this person. Uh, and you're hurting others because you're not dealing with the hurt that you're feeling towards this specific individual. So it definitely could be, Pisces, that you're needing to go through the conflict, not around or over or under. It's got to go through. You know, you have to go through this conflict with this individual so you can, well, not be so conflicted about them in, first, in the first place, you know, because then you can have healthier relationships after dealing with this conflict. <clears throat> this person, like I said, could be missing you with the Six of uh, Cups. They could be very nostalgic about this connection. They could be, uh, you know, reminiscing about the happy memories that you and them created. And just as I suspected, every time you want to move on into calmer waters, either with or without, it's like, can we be in a happy relationship? No? Okay. I'm going to move on then and be with someone who has mutual feelings, mutual love, respect, understanding, acceptance, etc etc but then like i said you get triggered because whenever they start missing you bam they charge in saying pisces i love you where you think you're going we still have unfinished business as i mentioned in the aquarius reading the knight of swords is the fastest card or the fastest knight mind you in the deck the fastest knight in the deck. Uh, second fastest only to the chariot, which we do not have in this reading at this time. But yeah. The knight of swords. This person comes charging after you. Oh my god, that's so true for me. Thank you. And it's like, well, what do you do with this person? It's like they, they don't want to treat you right. They don't want to treat you fairly. You know, they, they don't want to own up to the fact and take accountability that they're not, you know, giving you what you need. They're not being consistent with the energy that you're bringing to the table or they're not being as consistent as you are anyways, Pisces, which does make me wonder, is this person taking accountability for how they're creating a mess? <clears throat> Pisces, if this person literally is doing this, are you allowing them to do this? And how long have you been allowing this to go on? Uh, you know, you have to yourself take accountability for allowing this person to do this, you know, for creating a toxic monster. The shadow side does tell me that you both are wanting to emotionally detach and maybe take accountability because this is just very toxic. The shadow side does speak about the devil. This is the devil in this deck. The devil talks about obsession, about uh, addictions, third party situations, codependency, you know, being over playful, maybe. Toxicity, toxicity in the sense of hey, I don't want to love you correctly, but I also don't want to leave you alone. What am I to do? Except uh, bleed all over you and create this toxic monster. And allow, you know, the toxicity to trigger the Pisces and create some sort of conflict within the Pisces. Because I know the Pisces doesn't want conflict, but at the same time, are you taking accountability, Pisces, for how you're letting this person create this conflict within you every time 
they miss you and then charge in and say, Pisces, I love you. Come back to me. Don't go. Pisces, come back. Any kind of fool could see. All right, I'm done. Y'all, last days I felt like the card for all the signs for December is the High Priestess, but I can't tell why. Hmm. Well, it could be. Can you give your opinion? Mine? Moi? Um, oh, you're saying in your readings that you've been uh, pulling for yourself? There's a time to say no, and you're funny. LOL. <laughs> hey, thank you, Vicky Dunn. There is a time to say no, uh, but not every Pisces is aware that they are creating, you know what I'm saying, that they're creating a monster, you know, that maybe they're creating their own conflict within them by allowing this person to come back time after time, you know? No, I wasn't just got the intuitive thought about it. I don't know if I've uh, pulled a High Priestess for the Pisces a whole lot. I know I've pulled the Devil card a whole lot for the Pisces, especially within the last month or two. Um, but yeah, and it makes sense because, you know, the Pisces intentionally or maybe even unintentionally is allowing this person to come back in and love bomb, you know, the Pisces all over again. We have to, uh, you know, zero in on, okay, what is the problem here? Because the same issue keeps up happening over and over, and yet we're dealing with it in the same way, you know, only making this monster even bigger. So how can we take the insanity approach? You know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And I, I believe, you know, that you're wanting to move into calmer waters, not being delusional, not being insane. You know, hey, let me uh, ground myself and try to find a more reciprocal relationship because one minute this person doesn't want me, but then when they come back in, they can't treat me right. You know, that is literally the definition of toxic. <clears throat> with the seven of wands it definitely could be that your possible outcome is that you'll end up pushing this person away and standing your ground and I mean sure you might love this person there might be a lot of repressed emotions coming to the uh, surface from this person but it's like where were those emotions when I needed them when my emotions you know needed to be validated when my emotions needed to be validated. This is why it's so important for every single person to do stuff now, to say it now, before it's too late, you know, to act upon your emotions now, not then, not a week from now, you know? When you meet that person and you both are on the same page, do it now, do it right there and then, don't wait. Don't play it cool. You know what I'm saying? Because sooner or later, things are going to become uncertain and you're going to wish that you did. Yes, the moon card. Seven of wands to the moon card are your last two cards of advice, maybe even possible outcome. Sure, a lot of things will be uncertain for you. Maybe a lot of uh, repressed emotions for this person not repressed emotions for the Pisces because the Pisces has expressed their emotions time and time again. You know? Time and time again. And every time, this person would be like, yeah, I hear you, but I'm not listening. Okay, I guess I'll, uh, you know, move on into calmer waters, try not to create stress or misunderstandings or miscommunications, and, you know, try to find someone that reciprocates. No, get back here, Pisces. Aw, they love me. No, I, I gotta, I gotta say no again. You know, I gotta emotionally detach and create this uh, toxicity within me. Something about the Pisces 
uh, maybe triggers this person, you know what I'm saying, to uh, create maybe even conflict within themselves. It definitely does not have to be conflict within the Pisces. There's something about the Pisces, there's something about this person. Maybe this person needs to heal still. Maybe the Pisces still needs to heal something about reciprocal, you know, push-pull dynamics that maybe their parents, you know, taught the Pisces at a young age, at a teen age. You know what I'm saying? Maybe this is something that you need to feel from the past in order to release. Hey, wait a second. This is how my parents interacted. A push-pull dynamic. Or this is how... You know, my uh, babysitter and her boyfriend interacted, or my uncle and aunt, my whatever the case. You know what I'm saying? It's a dynamic that is a learned behavior, maybe. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, in the uh, nature sense of nature versus nurture. <clears throat> it is not in our nature to be codependent or to have codependency issues. It is in our nurturing it is in our nurturing or our upbringing, our parents, our grandparents, our uh, babysitters, our whoever was raising us or nurturing us, you know, to become this version of ourself that we have to unprogram, uncondition ourself, you know, from that behavioral pattern. And like I said, it, there might be a lot of unknowns for you, Pisces. There might be. But what isn't unknown, what is very known uh, about the future is how you will be standing your ground about how you feel, about what you believe in, about what you're saying, you know, no matter if this person has repressed emotions or not. This person might even try to blame the Pisces. No, the Pisces is leaving me gone. You didn't even give me a chance. BS, I call BS. The Pisces gave this person multiple chances to get it right, to express their emotions. You know, when the Pisces needed it. And it's like, well, I don't know what to tell you, uh, Knight of Swords. The person that keeps rushing in to say, no, Pisces, I miss you. Can we do it right this time? And then just turning around and disrespecting the Pisces all over again. Do you think everyone's capable to reprogram themselves? Yeah, I think so. Not everyone believes it, though. Not everyone believes it. You know? Everyone is, uh, not everyone, but most people are so stuck in their uh, conditioning or their programming or uh, their limited belief systems, you know, that their parents, you know, uh, taught them or programmed into their brains, you know, oh, sit down, shut up and watch TV. You're never going to do this. You're never going to be enough for that. You're, you're blah, blah, blah. It's all limited belief systems, you know? How would you know if I'll ever be in a, re a happy relationship? How would you ever know if I will be the first, you know, uh, astronaut in our family if I don't try? You know, just because you failed at something does not mean I will. Do not project your own insecurities or failures in life onto me. I gotta go feed the dogs, have a good night, and thank you for the reading. Not a problem. Y'all, I think that's where I'm gonna leave it. That's where I'm going to leave it, y'all. Thank you all so much for uh, hitting the follow button. Thank you for the rose. For uh, any of the gifts, for that matter. Thank you all for uh, supporting my endeavors, for subscribing to my YouTube channel, which the link to my YouTube channel is in my bio. If anyone is interested, definitely check it out. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and all that jazz. Uh, everyone send love to BlazeBaby98. Thank you so much for all of your work and effort. Gucci, Gucci, goo. Thank you for the uh, the hearts to tickle. Those are fun. Um, Y'all, go get you something to eat. Go get you a beverage. Smoke them if you got them. It's been a pleasure. Sorry for my spelling mistakes. Gratitude, not a problem. Love it here. Sweet. Y'all, much love to everyone. I love every single one of y'all. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be reading for y'all. Was dating a Leo. I'm a Pisces, left the person months ago. I put my foot down. There you go. Watto, bro. Have a great night. Y'all have a great night as well. Y'all have a great night as well. Good night. Uh, God bless. 
just popping in. Super smooth, Rick. Hey. Thank you so much. All right, y'all. It was an honor to read for the Aquarius, for the Pisces, for everyone for the week. Maybe one day I will do a reading uh, on a Sunday. Not this weekend. I'm going to definitely enjoy the, uh, the relaxing day off tomorrow. But y'all, have a good night. Uh, be safe out there in this crazy world. And take care of yourselves. All right? Much love, y'all.